For those responsible dads, however, it's most likely they will be unsung, unpraised, and unnoticed. Their value, though, will transcend the lives of their children and leave imprints in the hearts of many generations to come. It's no secret that you're shaped by the man who raised you, and your parenting style as a person is influenced by the way you were parented. But today's fathers grew up in a world which was very different from the one we know today. So how do they apply the principles they learned as children? How different is the challenge of parenting today? My guests today are responsible fathers who will tell us their story. Nana Redamwa is a writer, publisher, and chemical engineer in that order. Uh, good morning, Nana. And singer. <laughs> and singer. Oh, so where does it fit? <coughs> where, where, where should we put the singer? Writer, publisher, singer, chemical engineer? Yes. Or chemical engineer, singer? No. So the chemical <laughs> engineer is last. You know, and then evangelist. And evangelist. Yeah. You know, Nana gives me a lot of comfort mm. because I'm also an engineer <laughs> who has decided to do a lot of talking for a living. And he talks through his pen. So whenever yes. people ask me, I say, do you know where I'm setting Nana right now? <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> and you've already heard the voice of Uncle Lebo White. He's a playwright, a relationship and life coach, public speaker, host of Food for Thoughts on the Super Morning Show. He's also, he's also the father of at least 4.5 million people who listen to him every morning. And uh, grandfather now. And uh, a grandfather uh, now. Multiple, multiple times. Amazing, amazing, Multiple amazing. times. Um, in the next five years, when you come to watch our show, those you see on the stage will be my grandchildren. Mm. Mm, amazing. Yeah. In the next five years. In the next five years. That soon. Yeah. Hey, it's very serious. I'm yeah. looking at some of my team members and I'm wondering. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for having us. All right. But this is your conversation as well, listening to us. Um, 0244340437. What's the most important lesson you learned from your father? Before we get into the conversation, though, GT Bank and Visa International are rewarding customers who make payments with their Visa debit and prepaid card with an unforgettable Afcon experience. From now till the 10th of June 2019, Two customers who use their Visa cards for a minimum of 20 online and POS transactions are eligible to win a fun pack trip for two to Egypt, Cairo, to watch any Afghan group stage game of their choice. This is one for the fathers. One lucky customer will win the ultimate package to travel with their ward who will escort a Stars player from the tunnel to the pitch. Between June and July, use your GT Bank Visa cards to do at least one transaction daily for a week and earn a pass to an Afghan viewing party. Transact with your GT Bank Visa cards and win. Terms and conditions apply. For further inquiries, call 050-144-9490 or 050-140-9480. Guarantee Trust Bank. Won't you rather bank with us? Now make way for the real boss suit from Vodafone this weekend and enjoy unlimited entertainment, endless browsing and longer lasting calls on the network that gives you more. Get Vodafone's Boss Soup Bundle for only 5 Ghana cities and enjoy 5 gigabytes mobile data and 300 minutes of airtime to browse and stream and talk all weekend long. Just dial star 5588 hash now to subscribe to the Bossu Bundle and spend the weekend like a boss. Wow, you so let me begin with you, Uncle Ibo. Uh, in the US, <laughs> the National Retail Federation has said that the total spending on Father's Day would reach $15.5 billion. Now, by contrast, spending on Mother's Day presents this year will reach $23.6 billion. So, why are fathers not celebrated as much as our mothers? Well, because for us, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. For the men themselves? Oh, we don't care. It's not a big deal. It's, uh, we don't, it's, not, it's not a big deal. Plus, we will also not, um, we will not also um, blackmail you emotionally if you don't, if you don't celebrate us. <laughs> I mean, we... A lot of mothers will have a problem with you when you say that. Oh, they, they would emotionally blackmail you. Do you know how I struggled when I carried you, I carried you nine months in my womb. You know, nature, nature. When it comes to parenting, nature, nature takes a stand against us. Nature Be itself. Yes, nature itself takes a stand against us. Because what can you say? I mean, she can say that I had a very difficult pregnancy with you. What would you say? <laughs> that I had a very difficult court. <laughs> <laughs> Nana, do you agree? Do mothers <laughs> emotionally blackmail the children? No, I actually had a, a, a poem I had written two two years ago. And I, I, I think I'll just read it quickly to answer your question. Okay. A father is like a midfielder in a football team. 
When he plays well, he's not noticed. When he doesn't play well, it is obvious. A father is like a good engine. When he performs well, it is all silent efficiency. When he performs badly, it is noisy cacophony. Mm -hmm. A father's deep sentiments are expressed in the base of his snow. Me bro, <laughs> me bro. That's the refrain. A father's deepest wishes and fears are like the iceberg. We only see the tip. So to all fathers who worry, dream, work, labor, run, rush, push, pull, sweat, and strive so your families can become better today, tomorrow than they were yesterday. So I think fathers have really been conditioned to, to know that they, they are the people who are pulling the strings in, 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 in the background. Mm -hmm. And, um, and our, our work is, is sometimes deemed by ourselves as really being thankless. Okay. So, like, I agree with Uncle Ebo. It's, it's not something we really make a fuss about. Even, I mean, even on social media this week, you realize that people are just teasingly saying that, hey, we are reminding you, we are reminding you. But I think also over the years, we have been, we have been conditioned to say that, you know, this is a job that we do and we do it in the background. Okay, uh, so this morning it's interesting the the analogy you used with the in parts of an engine and a midfielder because this morning I described fathers as internal organs. Mm. They they are not seen, but they are doing a lot of work down there. Uh, we've asked a lot of our colleagues to share with us what uh, their most important lessons are, the lessons they learned from their fathers, and we'll hear a few of them now. My father didn't come from a very privileged background and so for him he would always want to um, emphasize the importance of hard work. He wanted us to never feel like life would give us what we deserved. He never wanted us to take any shortcuts but he always wanted us to have an understanding that hard work was very important and that there was a character to be built um, through hardship. And so those are things that he would always emphasize when we were growing up, just to make sure we never felt that we were entitled to anything in life, but life would only give you what you work hard for, what you fight for. And I think one major, major thing was the element of just simplicity and success in that whatever you receive in life is not meant for you alone. It's not meant for you to be overly extravagant or to show off, but it's meant for you to be able to share with others and um, be a blessing to other people. And so I think those are the major things that I learned. My father was a very serious man at all times. Didn't talk much, didn't laugh much. But every time the lights went off, and when I was a kid, Doomso was a bit more rare than it is these days. But every time the lights went off, all of a sudden my father would come to life and start telling the funniest stories. Until the lights came back on and then he went straight back to his serious, straight-faced self once again. Uh, but those doomsome moments, you know, will stay with me forever. I remember all his jokes, his stories. I tell some of them today, not as well as he did, but uh, my son still laughs when I tell them. Um, I think as a father, the one thing that will be different about me is that I won't wait until the lights are off before I show my son the lighter side. My son is my best friend. He and I have the greatest times. We have the greatest adventures. And the one lesson my father taught me that I hope to pass on to my son is about discipline. Get the work done before you play. You know, solve the problems. Uh, that was the thing that my father used to always tell me, that it's my job to solve the problem, not anybody else's. And I'm hoping my son learns that as well as he grows up. So you just heard uh, Kojo Yangsen and Mami Dakwa Awinado describing the most important lessons that their fathers taught them. That's not all. We asked a few others, a few other friends as well. Listen, he was a seaman, so he'd be gone for a long time. But whenever he was around, you really felt his presence. Like when my dad was around, he made sure my mom would do nothing. He would bathe us. He would take us to school. He would go to the market. He would cook, come and get us from school, and then bathe us and everything. So like my dad was an amazing guy. And subconsciously, it affected the kind of um, males or boys I allowed in my life growing up. So all through GSS and all through SS, no guy was worthy to be my boyfriend because, like, I sort of measured you against my dad, and I realized, like, Chaluka, only guy be 
And then even up to today, my siblings make fun of me about how I used to tell my dad that I'm a wire or why. <laughs> like when I was little, I thought, and I still think like he's the cool, he's the coolest dad out there. Though he wasn't such an amazing husband, he was like an awesome, awesome dad. And by virtue of that, the man I'm married to is awesome. He's also hands-on and he's not like your typical Ghana guy who sits and expects expect you to serve him and then, you know, be at his beck and call. He doesn't mind cooking his meals. He doesn't mind scooping his own dinner or lunch and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I have that man as a dad for my daughters. And I pray that it also influences the kind of men they allow in their life. Great. Uh, interesting lessons there from uh, helping to choose marriage partners to helping to be more disciplined. But generally, it's obvious that the person your father is really influences the kinds of lessons that, that you learn. And of course, let me also remind listeners that Israel Lai will be joining us on the show. Mm. Uh, it's 22 minutes past eight. Israel will be joining us very, very shortly. Uh, so, Nana, what kind of man was your father? Ooh. So um, again, in the in in my own way of doing things, I actually have a long article I'd written for him many many years ago, which is published in my first book. But my father set as a very high standard of example. He wasn't perhaps the typical um, father in his generation because he was really hands on. My first memories of my father was going out with him when I was three, maybe around four or five years. And uh, going with his friends, they'll be chatting, they'll be uh, drinking, they'll be eating. And uh, I would have to recite poems for their entertainment. So okay. perhaps that's, that contributed to mm. what I became later. And he was a driver. He was a driver with UAC. So he drove these big Bedford tracks. Mm-hmm. So he would be gone on track for like a week or two. And then he would come home, sleep, and then he would come to our school, our preparatory school, mm-hmm. in his togas. Okay, which this was way trousers. yes. This was way ahead of open days that we have now. So he come with his togas to come and talk to the headmaster and our teachers about our results. Way 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 ahead of his time mm. in 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 all mm. of that. Wow. And he was our friend. You know, um, we we never called him that. We called him Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was his nickname. Mm. Um, and I I you know many many lessons. So. Uh, I just want to end, end with this. I remember a few years before he died, he was telling me about the fact that he could have gone abroad at a point. Mm-hmm. Because that, a- again, was part of what his generation was yeah. doing. Mm. You know, they come to Accra, they work for some time, they get some, some money, then and they, they go. go to Europe. But he said, he, a lot of his friends were leaving, but he just, he just realized that if he left, he would not be part of our lives. Wow. And that is why he stayed he stayed behind you know and it has later in life influenced my own decision you know to leave a, a job a job abroad and come and be with a family because i decided that i would not let my children live uh, grow up without my my presence in Amazing. their life so my, my dad really really had a great uh, influence in in my life very very early amazing now uh, uncle i was at a crazy ride and when you mentioned that your father was a retired boxer he was a retired boxer and boxer and footballer yes but your bo- y- your boxing dreams did not <laughs> <laughs> no unfortunately in that respect i was not the son of my father <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about the the old boxer uh my father was a bundle of contradictions. Um, I I was excited listening to Bombasin. Okay. Um, talking about... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's Bombasin because the man is Bombay. Yes, so right. Bombasin. Um, talking about his father. My, If you ask me today, what lessons did I... What did my father teach me? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that what my father taught me is don't drink. Alcohol destroyed him. He was He was a wonderful man when he wasn't drunk. But when he touched alcohol, um, he became a very different person. Um, so, and that's what I, I talk about, the, bond, the bundle of contradictions. He, he took his work very seriously. Um, for an alcoholic, mm. it's interesting that he never missed work because of alcohol. Mm. But when he closes, 
um, then you never can tell what will happen um, to him. Um, he took his work seriously. Um, he, this is an alcoholic who was respected by everyone in the society because he respected himself. Today I look back and wonder how does that happen because mm. every drunkard is is a spice. Mm. But this was a drunkard who had the utter respect of everybody, um, both at Sass and Treso, um, where we lived, because he, he got us to live there, and then he lived at Bompata or Fantin Newtown, both mm. at Fantin Newtown and at Sass and Treso. Everybody knew, yes, he the guy could drink, um, and yet he had the respect of everybody. Um, mm. Somehow he managed that. Amazing, amazing. Co- a man of contradictions, yes. indeed. How did he relate to you? If you were to describe how he raised you, what would you say? The and that that has been part of my struggle for life. I was his favorite. Um, he had between he and my mother, they had five boys. Okay, I was the first, mm. and he named me after his mother. He named me after his mother. Okay who was the only one in his life because his father did not did not represent so it was his mother so i was his favorite and he made that one very obvious to everyone this is my favorite son you don't touch him um because that is my mother and he, he lavished a lot of attention on me then he died you know and um wow. he died when i was 14 mm. and i never forgave god I think it took me over 15 years to come to terms with the fact that, well, he died. Because I was very bitter. I was very bitter with God. Uh, meanwhile, I was a Christian. Uh, so, so that struggle, uh, because his death brought changes that I couldn't have imagined. You know, um, it was for, for me, um, because I was his favorite. The one after me was my mother's favorite. <laughs> do you understand me mm-hmm. so i had lost my champion mm-hmm. but he hadn't lost his champion mm-hmm. <laughs> in the house so there was constant reminder in the house as to my loss mm-hmm. you know i hadn't just lost a father i had lost uh, a, a pillar so like a jacob so, and nico is your situation there um yeah except that in this case um isaac did not die you know, Isaac, yeah. did, Isaac did not die there. My Isaac died mm. too early. Amazing. Amazing. It's um, 28 minutes past eight. I just have to take a moment to breathe this in because the absence of a father is also something that can really... Oh, it's, it's traumatic. It's traumatic. And I think for me, it's only by the grace of God that I've, I've got it back together mm. because my life could have... Um, uh, sometimes we underestimate... The effect of the passing of a father on the children. You know, we think that, oh, we'll be better. Oh, they are um, AJB where AJB TSA, um, which is one of the biggest lies <laughs> that we tell people. Um, and so there isn't any grief counseling for children. Mm. We don't do that. Mm. Um, and I didn't do that. And I know that my life um, spiraled out of control. Um, mm of his orbit for a long time you know so for 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 years i was just a husk just moving it what is only by just a husk i was just going through the motions a shell yes i was just mm, a just shell. An empty shell yeah just an empty shell there was nothing going on within and it took years like i said at least uh, 15 years before i realized hey listen um if you say you loved your father and of course you knew he loved you your biggest um um, tribute to him is to get back control of your life so that wherever you go and you mention your name and it is linked to him there will be honor on him mm. you know so that is when and, and by that time I had lost 15 years but he still impacted you from the grave oh yes yes yes, yes. amazing stuff yes. Um, your level and that is why I don't touch alcohol because I saw alcohol the impact of alcohol I still believe that he drank enough alcohol for all his children <laughs> and none of us has a, any reason to drink some because otherwise we'll have more than our first share <laughs> wow. allocation of alcohol in the world the for six <laughs> no, exactly, but I'm, I'm laughing because i had a colleague in nigeria who had a theory that mm-hmm. the sons of smokers don't smoke 
So he was smoking for his children. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious. Okay, um, we've been joined in studio by the Israel Lair, um, host of Joy News Prime. He's also Joy News editor, a father of three. Israel. If you signed on to a uh, prime 30 minutes late, <laughs> then be helpful. Very, I'm extremely sorry. That, uh, we understand. That we this understand. happened. Yeah. We understand. There's no problem. But but I was listening in on the conversation mm. and uh, mm. great thoughts uh, shared by Uncle Ebo and uh, Nana Redama so far. All right. All right. You know what? We'll give it all a, a moment to catch his breath. We'll be right back to hear his story. And I want to hear th- what kind of parenting style we all went through. I mean, Nana has already, uh, already talked about how his father would go to school in his togas and inspect the grades. What else happened? We'll be right back to find out. So you wanted that weave, that one that so long attaches your toes. Got it. A disco light for the room when the sweetheart comes over. Swoon your major in a bug debt. Those chrome spinning wheels that will have people at church praying to be you. <laughs> but them. Now, how about those mega woofers that will wake up the whole neighborhood? Audit. Because you've got the card that makes it all possible. You don't need a bank account to spoil yourself. You can now securely load funds for travel, pay for goods and services online and at your favorite shop, or give your loved ones unending spending options or possibilities with a perfect gift card. Get a Cowbank prepaid card now. Because you can. Cowbank. Forward together. The Malcolm Grand Furniture Sale promo is on. Really? Tell me more. Enjoy 10 to 50% discount on the entire range of home and office furniture. Wow! Exclusive office you won't find again. I I like like it. it. Remember, terms and conditions apply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Malcolm, we're gonna shop. Get 100% bonus when you top up airtime with Vodafone Cash. Dial star 110 hash to top up now. If you know, you know. The future is exciting. Ready? Same great bank, helping you grow. Do you have challenges transferring money to your friends or customers with accounts at other banks? Are you worried at the delays with other banks' checks you deposit into your account? Do you have challenges paying your workers or suppliers instantly across banks? You don't need to wait for two days anymore. Walk into any ADB branch today and send your money instantly to any account in Ghana or link ADB Instant Pay to your accounting software for all salaries and payments. You can also access ADB Instant Pay service on our mobile banking app, internet banking, and star 767 hush. ADB, truly a Greek and more. in your cup and joy on the set the super morning show is always the best bet on joy 99.7 fm
7 FM in the studio with me, of course, I am Daniel Dazi. In the studio with me is Nana Red Damwa, um, writer. Okay, we've added some, so I have to take my time. He's a writer, he's a publisher, he's a singer, he's an evangelist and a chemical engineer in that order. Uh, Ankle Bohais is a playwright, relationship and life coach, public speaker, host of Food for Thoughts on the Super Morning Show and a soon-to-be grandfather. And multiple gra- hey, I will see you. Multiple gra- <laughs> Not to po- hey, my children will take you to court. What are you, <laughs> you, can, lawyers, you can't win them out of existence. My lawyers are cooling <laughs> off, don't worry. Uh, Israel Lai is host of Joy News Prime, the major bulletin on the Joy News channel. He's also Joy News editor here. We call him the legend. Uh, I can say that here because it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a father of three. But if you're looking for a one, two, something, um, if my children are waiting for me to do a song with them like Will Smith and Jaden have done, they will wait a long <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but Uncle, you did something nice with um, King Promise and yep. Kwame Eugene during a crazy ride. <laughs> On stage, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad at all. Anyway, so um, 24 minutes to the top of the... This is with Trey Smith, uh, right, people. not with Jaden, pardon me for that. Did- but if you're looking for a one, two or three seater and L-shaped sofa crafted to the finest details available in various colors for your home, office or hotels, so you're looking for comfortability, durability, quality and perfect finish and look no further. Latex Foam is your one-stop shop destination, whatever your choice and budget. Latex Foam is your partner for life. Now, Teleto has the fastest internet experience on 4G in the country with coverage in Accra, Tema, Hoko, Foridia, Takrade and Bolgatanga. For the youth, Telesol has Telesol Wave bundles designed to cater for youth lifestyle, starting from as low as 2 cities 50 pest west. Telesol has 4G internet service to meet business, homes and on-the-go needs. This is 4G data not only on your phone and handheld devices, but also extended for use in offices and homes. Telesol for everyone. Now there's Telesol Fiber Broadband. Telesol has fiber broadband services for homes and offices at affordable rates with varied speeds, unlimited and bundled data options. Do you live in any of these areas? Airports Residential, Laboni, Ridge, Cantonments, Jolu and other locations. Call Telesol to find out about your area and service availability. The number is 0303-975-342 or 344. The email is inquiry at 4G.com. Telesol, just a touch. All right, so I'll begin with Israel at this time. We already know about the the retired soldier, <laughs> yeah. the gruff man. And yesterday I was reading about how you had to go through quite the beating oh, yeah. when you were younger. Tell yeah. us about that. What style of parenting did he use? My dad was really strict, and uh, probably because he was a he was a soldier, or he was an ex-soldier at the time, and uh, he was also a Presbyterian, or he came from the Presbyterian, you know. Okay. The son my of a Presbyterian minister. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my mom, too, was a uh, Presbyterian. So, I mean, we had all of that uh, at home. And you know, I, I thought that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a bad boy, really. But my dad wouldn't give me any breathing space at all. I mean, mm-hmm. the slightest thing I, I did, which you found out. I mean, it could be anything like going to play in the next house with the boys. Mm. And um, I knew that I had to get home before my dad showed up. And so we, my, my friends, my playmates would actually be the ones to signal me that your dad is coming. And I would run, jump the wall, get into the bathroom and go and have a you know shower so that, I mean, it doesn't look like I've gone out to yeah. play. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes I wasn't so lucky and uh, <laughs> I got a beating. The signal came late. <laughs> I, I got a beating, got a beating for that. For, so for, I, I grew up telling myself that I didn't want to be mm. what my dad was mm. to me. Mm. I mean, if I was being disciplined, overly disciplined, and I felt that my dad was too much, I shouldn't be that. And that was uh, quite an influence. And it, it informs the way I, I deal with my kids now. How do you deal with them now? Oh, I... It's more of explanation. If you do something wrong, we're talking about it. Mm. We're discussing it. So... Yeah, we, and 
I'm not going to wait until you do something wrong. But if I observe something in the environment, then we're having a conversation about it. That it's because of this, you don't want to do this, to do that, so that it turns out this way and all that. And generally, we tend to have conversations amongst, you know, with the kids, all, all of them. I mean, all three of them, if they are around. Okay. And so I spot something, we're having a conversation about it. And it's, it's also it's not so much about not to do this, not to do that, but it's also about explaining to them things in our environment. Mm-hmm. So why I'm doing this, why why I'm monitoring the solar system, why I'm turning off lights at this time, why we're doing this, why we're doing that, all of that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's that way you explain it to them and they tend to accept it and they can apply it in various aspects of their lives. And interesting. Boys interesting. And girls. How many how many boys? So two boys and one girl. Two boys and one girl. Yeah. How how many do you have, Nana? I have uh, two boys and a girl. Two boys and a girl. Oh, so that's all I met. I met all of them the day I came. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I yes. didn't I didn't know that was all of them. It's quite a <laughs> And I'm still counting them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've uncle. We I'm, give, we I'm give him new ones. Them. We give him new ones every day. Um, but but Nana, tell me a bit more about how the parenting style you went through, especially from your dad, has influenced how you deal with the three of them. So like I said in the beginning, he really sets a high standard for us uh, in terms of how hands-on uh, he was, how close he was, how open he was. And uh, I, I missed one thing. I had a great letter-writing relationship with him. So I still oh. have the letters we used to exchange. And he would pour his heart out, his, uh, his frustrations and all of that, open up. Because especially when he left Accra to Wasa and things mm-hmm. did not go as he had, he had planned, you know, mm-hmm. he, he could. And uh, well, one funny one, he, his mom had passed away and he said his brother had taken some of his inkusia, like the insawa that was due him. Okay. So he had left a beard and he said he was not taking off the beard unless his brother refunded the money to him. <laughs> so I have a letter where he was explaining to me, I said, okay, now I understand you. I've listened to you. I'll take off the beard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those funny things. So he, he really set up that standard for us. So I have that same, perhaps, because I, I know I want to match up, I have sat that same thing uh, with my kids. Something uh, Israel said that I want to pick up. So we were counseled before we got married by uh, Uncle Isaac and Auntie Joy Ashon okay. of Ray Church. Uh-huh. And one thing they said, we stuck with, I said, when your children start coming, never speak with them in baby speak. Never speak to them like you are speaking to babies because children are so intelligent. Mm. Speak to them as adults. So as Israel said, in terms of explaining to kids, we started very early. So in the same style, we are open. If I'm frustrated, they see. If I'm annoyed, I tell them. Um, I've, I've never beaten them. because my, uh, uh, Interestingly, my father was an ex-soldier as well, but he never beat us. He was famed for his shout. So you don't want him to shout at you. My mm. mom rather did the beating, <laughs> you know. So I, of course, I never, I never um, lift my my hand uh, on them. Um, I've always tried to be very present uh, in in their lives. So you know, I was away in Nigeria, working in Nigeria for yes. five years. Yes. So right, I started in April. I hadn't been paid because you needed your work permit and stuff for your bank account to be done. So I took some money. My son was getting uh, his he was having his birthday uh, end of April. So I took some money from somebody. Came by road. Got home at 12 midnight. He was asleep. Woke him up at 4. We spent only like 2 hours or so because I had to get back to the bus station oh. at 6. Oh. And I left. But it was then that I decided that I was going to, I was going to come home every 4 weeks. Because I never did I did, I didn't want to be absent for, for their lives. So mm. for for 60, 60 uh, months, I was coming home every four weeks. Mm. Okay, so and how uh, long would you spend at home when you when you come? You know, again, I told my friends that when I came home, I wasn't counting my time with them in days. I was counting in hours. Wow. You know, so I go with them everywhere I went during. Sometimes I came overnight because we were we were building a new factory. I I couldn't be away for for too long. So sometimes I came overnight. Mm. Okay, but so when I I came, I wasn't counting in days. I count in hours. So I go for the, with them to every event I have to go, book reading, wedding, engagement because you want to have contact okay. uh, time. So it's really about having contact time with them, <laughs> and not being present uh, in their lives. And that's that's the approach I've had wow. uh, with them. 
Wow, uh, interesting experiences there. Now, Uncle, we have to let the cat out of the bag at a point. Um, for those who may not know, Uncle does not have biological children, yeah. but you have adopted kids. Yes. I was trying to find out yesterday. I called so many people and everyone said plenty. <laughs> <laughs> so, please, put, put, put a number. How many do you have? <laughs> well, I, th- I think that will be known when I die. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is at my funeral that the, when they all, sure you yeah, when they all turn up. Um, because... Um, Yesterday, one turned up at um, Reheza's and mm-hmm. said, "You've uh, you fathered me. You mm-hmm. didn't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. um, so I'm I'm on Father's Day. I'm coming to r- show myself. So mm-hmm. there are many such out there. And when I pray, I pray for those I know and those I don't know. Amazing, amazing. I'm glad I've crossed the bridge from those who don't know to those <laughs> <laughs> those you know now. Mm-hmm. But um, so how is it like for those you actively <coughs> engage with every day and you actively participate in their growth? Yes. How do you deal with them? And how does it compare with how your dad deals with you? I think my my style is is very different. I I hold you like um like an egg in my in my palm, but I don't crush you. You know, so it's like um, I have an open palm, and you are there. If you want to remain there, the hand would always be there. If you want to move out too, you can move out. Mm. But when you do come back, the hand will still be there for you to find safety and comfort and guidance and direction. So I do not try to intrude into the lives of my of my children. I want them to find things and discover things for themselves. Um, if they come asking questions, we would have a chat. And we can have a very long chat. Um, but if they don't come to... Um, I'm, I just want them to know I'm there. They know, my children know I do not judge mm. them. There is nothing like, how can you do this? No. I am interested in what have you learned from this? Mm. And then we work, we work through, through it. Because what I discovered is that children of good parents become cheap, easy meat for the wrong influences in town mm. because a lot of the values they are forced to um, imbibe and, and live by are imposed on them by their parents. They themselves mm. haven't... Um, they haven't experienced... No, they the haven't. They don't have... It. It. They know daddy will be disappointed if I did this, so I wouldn't do it. They have no reason beyond that as to why... They don't I d- own them. I d- no. So, if they find themselves in the company of bad influence, they have nothing Mm. to 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 hold back. And and I'm sure you all saw that in boarding schools where Mm. children from very good homes, you know, um, and my my friends who are head head masters will tell me, is that it is so sad when a child has been disciplined and has been either been suspended or something. The child goes home and the father comes angry how can the school disgrace my son like that because the child I raised will not be will, will not even think of doing this the, the school doesn't like my son then the man comes with that heat and then they bring evidence to him and sometimes he said for 20 20 minutes the man can't get up and go mm. because that is not the son that is not a child I raised and so what I've done is that you know my values. I would share why I hold those values. But you're also young. Um, I will not judge you by my now. I still remember what it felt like in your time. I still felt. I still remember what it felt like to be in a room with a with in a classroom with a girl, and you love the girl to base, and the girl doesn't know that you, and you keep. You know, trying to keep hey. her in your in your gaze and things like that. I I know that. Pick her book and go and give it to her. That's right, class. and you are always hanging around hey, and uncle. things like that. And you are rehearsing your lines. You know, again and again and again. I I still know that, and so that's what I bring to my children. I I do not. I make them understand. I still remember my youth. Mm. All right. So my youth is there as an open book for for you to learn from. But learning, you must learn it. That one, I can learn for you. Mm. I can put information there. I can give you the tools. Now, let's see how you apply it. 
And now just sent us a message. She says, and now White, of course, is one of Uncle Abel's numerous kids. She mm. says, when no, 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 don't call her one. I mean, she's a premier. I mean, she's <laughs> a queen. <laughs> <laughs> now forgive him. He, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But but her message is, um, when you go out and your arms back, he doesn't sleep. She just she sent it like that. Okay. Uh, I, I'm curious to find out some of those stories. But, but Israel, so there's this um, debate. Are they your friends? Are they your kids? Are you their their authority? Are you their safe place? Um, have you had to face that, considering the kind of upbringing you had, where your dad was obviously this authority who would discipline you immediately? Have you ever had that conflict in your mind? We try and uh, and this is something I do together with my wife. We try and be all of that to them, friend, authority, and everything else. So that we make it possible for them to approach us and have conversations with us and tell us stuff that's going on in their lives. But at the same time, they know the boundaries. So they know that they're not supposed to overstep their, their boundaries. Where they go wrong, we, we talk to them, we tell them where, they, where, we have to, where we have to discipline them. We do discipline them. How? How do you discipline them? It's it mainly, well, I've had to whip the boys a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But it also has to do with speaking at them. I, I always say that I think we have been blessed with some of the most wonderful kids. I can say that all the time. But like Uncle Lebo is saying, you send them away to boarding school and they're going to pick up all sorts <clears throat> of yeah you know, characters and and traits. The one thing I pray all the time is that whatever happens, and it's also one of the reasons why we send them off to boarding school quite early. We we feel that we've sheltered them for so long, sheltered them for so long that if we're to wait until they grow a lot more, you know, before we send them to... They'll have no shock absorbers. Yes. They'll have no shock absorbers for life. They'll be so shocked. Yeah. But then at this point, they are in boarding school where they have a lot of supervision. Mm-hmm. And so they come back, they tell you stories, and then you guide them. Yeah. They come back yeah. and they tell you stuff. And then we get the opportunity to tell them, you see, the world doesn't have people like your siblings who okay. are good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The world has people mm-hmm. who are bad, who are naughty. So it's good that you know all of these. And so you know how to navigate the world when you go out there. So to give listeners a proper context, at what age did you send them off to boarding school? Twelve. Twelve? Which was um, so the beginning year, of... So year seven. Yeah. So from class six, they go to year seven. Okay. Yeah. So that's... The, it, it was... That's, there were those who felt Wasn't that... Wasn't it tough for you to make it? Huh? It wasn't because I was comfortable with the school where they were going. Okay. And I knew that there was going to be enough supervision and we we're going to get to see them, you know, regularly. But I needed them to, you know, be a little resilient. Not think that, you know, your home and everything is taken care of for you. They should go out there. And we have our kids doing, you know, the dishes. They're doing laundry. Mm. They're even at mm. that age. And mm. that's something... That we wanted to get them to, you know, get to know and get to learn and get to practice at this very early age. So, so Nana, you were talking about how you had to speak to your kids as adults from the very start. But how did you get them to begin to think like responsible people? Or is, is, it, is that a journey that has ended it's in a, the first place? No, no, it's, it's not ended. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's not ended. It's a continuing engagement. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's that's my short response okay, uh, to, okay. to, to that. But it's, it's, it's a continuous engagement. There, there is no one formula. Okay. It's, it's, the engineers would say it's iterative. So you, 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 you test this, you, you fine-tune, you test, you fine-tune. And there is no one formula for every child as well. You know, so you have to know the, the specific child and how you, you, you are managing uh, that child. So it's, it's, it's parents learn as, as, along with their kids. That's one No, we grow. We thing. grow. Uh, <laughs> father, fathers, fathers are not born. Yeah. You know, we grow with them. Yeah. But there's, there's a point, listening to the two of them talk, there's a point that I, I needed to make. You know, the, 
there is a danger for being a wonderful person when you have children mm. because it imposes a burden on your children society expects too much of them and children at a certain point rebel mm. against that because they can't live up to it you know society do not realize that the Bo white today was on the Bo white in 1970s yeah do you understand me but they are judging my children in their teens against the 65 year mm. old Abel white who mm. talks sense mm. the Abel white of 1970 was a fool <laughs> do you understand me and you wouldn't want to be close to him so that burden and it is the thing i try to take off my children mm. even though society does not spare them mm. you know you go anywhere and say uncle bo is my father oh really they immediately put you in a certain thing but the person is himself or herself at that level of the development so what i the biggest thing i try to do for them is that don't mind them be yourself i can imagine be if israelized kids ever made a mistake while speaking english i mean what's oh. what kind we, of we, we, no we we actually would actually correct them and uh, my wife tends to do a lot of that i mean we're, we're all oh, having a conversation mm. you know he they will say something and so no you don't say it you say it this way and then they accept it and then we we get to move on we're we're, we're friends and i i love the relationship mm. that we've been able to nurture with the kids and the fact that we have both been present in their lives one mm. of the things we decided to do when we got married was to say that we're not going to have any bring in any house help Mm. And so for the, you know, close to 15 years that we've been married, we haven't had any house help. And wow. it's been, but fortunately for us, uh-huh. it's been a situation where we've been able to, one has been, if one isn't available, the other is. Okay. So in the morning, you know, back then, uh, at Joy FM, I would wake up at dawn, sometimes at 4 a.m. to come to work. To do 6 a.m. And then my wife will be taking care of the kids, sending mm-hmm. them to school. I'll close early and then I'll go fetch them from school take them take them from school they only fetch them from school <laughs> it's as if you are going to as if you are going to fetch water <laughs> so okay. pick them from school yeah. send them home give them food they doing their homework and all that and so at some point then right now as uh-huh. it is uh-huh. it's i'm the one who doesn't leave home early yes. okay so okay. then i okay. take care of them well my wife would there's not much taking care of to do as mm-hmm. as 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 of now, but I'll send uh, Samantha to school, mm-hmm. and then my wife, when she closes from work, then she will pick them yeah. from okay. um, our neighbor, and then send okay. send her home. So okay. we've been we've we've had it going very well for us, and uh, mm. uh, I'm I'm very grateful for that, and it, it's gotten me to enjoy the moments I've had with them. I, I taught them how to ride a bicycle. Nice. And they tell me, oh, I want to learn swimming. So we'll go out to, for swimming lessons and all that back back then. And these are moments I really, really, really cherish. And yeah. it, like I said, the things that I wished or I, I wished for and I didn't get in my dad, I tried very hard to get my kids to enjoy yeah. hmm. all of that.
Hello again, it's me, Daryl, with the Joy Business Minute. Finance Minister Ken Ofriata says he's optimistic of meeting the end of year revenue target despite challenges in the first quarter. Based on available fiscal data, government should have mobilized almost 12 billion CDs in domestic taxes but was only able to rake in a little over 10 billion. President Kufado says he is working to revive direct flights between Ghana and Trinidad and Tobago to strengthen the bond between the two nations. According to the president, discussions on an air services agreement is already a part of ongoing talks with the island nation. Ghana has made its first appearance at the Global Petroleum Show in Calgary, Canada. The three-day event attracted thousands of upstream petroleum professionals, providing a platform for the Petroleum Commission to attract investors. Vodafone says it is working to tackle disruption to its mobile and fixed-line broadband services. It has experienced a fault with an international link used to transmit data between countries but is rerouting traffic to address the issue. Catch you again at 306. At Afrodan, we believe that many of the problems people have with their health is as a result of the way they sit. In other words, your chair can kill you. Here's Dr. Marcus Mann of the Chiropractic and Wellness Center. What you have to remember is that the spine is the lifeline to your body. And posture is the window to that spine. Now, posture is affected by your daily activities and habits like sitting. That's why at the Chiropractic and Wellness Centers, we recommend what I believe to be the best chairs available for preventing not only subluxations, but also other health problems that you may not be aware of. And that's Rabami and Mobilex chairs. Unfortunately, on a daily basis, I have to correct the effects of this poor sitting habit in our businessmen and businesswomen. Always remember, optimal spine equals optimum health. So, for the sake of your health, buy Robami or Mobilex chairs from Afrodan. We are on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade. Telephone 663-085. Hey, Kwame, hmm. what's up here? My brother, my wife has been diagnosed with cancer. What? Uh, my brother is here with kidney disease too. Oh, yeah. Do you know the World Health Organization estimates that over 16,000 new cases of cancers are diagnosed annually in Ghana and kidney diseases account for 10% of all medical admissions to Kolebu? But thanks to Glycocritical Illness Plan, Jason, I have spent over 20,000 Ghana cities on my younger brother's disease. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is GSIP? Glycocritical Illness Plan, GSIP, provides you with financial support when diagnosed with any critical illness or dread disease such as cancers, strokes, kidney failures. Speak to Glycolife today on 0302-218-500 for your GSIP policy. It is definitely in our interest to survive. Glycolife, we cushion you for life. I love to see children grow healthy and strong. That's why I fully support exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life. Breast milk alone has all the food and water that a baby needs to grow healthy and strong. It's pure and it's safe. I'm Rebecca Kufuado. I believe and support the Good Life campaign from the Ghana Health Service and so should you. Good life. Live it well. It's an everyday thing. for all. Good life. At UBA, we pay close attention to your every detail, making you feel like a VIP every time you visit us. We have the strongest financial and technological background, making us number one in risk management. We have offices in New York, Paris and London, and presence in 20 countries across Africa. UBA has successfully operated in Ghana for almost 15 years, with 28 branches throughout the country. Visit us today at a branch near you, UBA. Africa's Global Bank. So everyone says I'm a Kosia filler, but it's not like I'm nosy. Oh, go out to find out the latest filler. It's just that I get 50 megabytes of data free after paying for only the first minute of every call. And so I just keep discovering stuff minute after minute. That's how come I was minding my business, scrolling through my timeline, and I found out Coco has a new baby. Hmm. Oh, and last week, I learned Ken won the lottery. You see, Ken is my brother's friend. So hello. Look who's about to roll with the rich and famous. <laughs> Enjoy even more value with MTN Free After One. You only pay for the first minute of your call on MTN Free After One. And the rest is free. Plus, you enjoy free 50 megabytes worth of data to browse your favorite sites. Compare where? Open there. So dial star 315 hash to sign up. We day for you everywhere you go. Terms and conditions apply. Africa 
is connecting with China in the Grand China Trade Week 2019, happening right here in Accra, Ghana. Come and meet the international exhibitors. The third edition of China Trade Week promises to be the biggest gathering of manufacturing businesses ever in Ghana. Join in the three days conference and meet all the high profile speakers. China Trade Week 2019 is happening at the Accra International Conference Center from the 19th to 21st June, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day. And it's absolutely free. Register today at ctwghana.com or call 030-226-0243 for information. China Trade Week 2019, connecting China with Africa. <laughs> My name is Kwame Sefakai, and most of you know me as a media personality, but I am also a family man. The UMB mobile banking app, UMB Speed App, saves me so much time by letting me do almost all of my banking transactions on my phone. The cardless withdrawal feature allows me to withdraw cash from any UMB ATM without an ATM card. I can also pay bills, transfer money, request for a loan, invest money, and so much more. So now, I can spend less time at the bank and more time with the ones I love. <laughs> bank anywhere and anytime with a UMB mobile banking app, UMB Speed up and get the time to do what you love most. Download the UMB Speed Up from your Android, iOS or Windows phone today. Call 0302-633-988 for more information. UMB Speed Up, Digibank, let's go! The National Service Scheme has begun processing prospective National Service personnel for deployment to various sectors across the country. The scheme invites MMDAs, ministries, departments and agencies, educational institutions, hospitals and private corporate organizations to put in a formal request to the Secretariat. User agencies can also log on to the NSS website www.nss.gov.gh to submit requests for personnel. User agencies with special needs advise to contact the NSS Secretariat for discussions on their requests. All requests must reach the headquarters of the National Service Scheme before the 14th of June 2019. For more information, please visit www.nss.gov.gh. Let's support our young men and women to make a meaningful contribution to national development in the spirit of love for country and service to humanity. National Service, service to the nation. Blessing all fathers, all responsible men up there who show up for their kids. 
Ya mwaye Ya de mwasidaka we're also celebrating what it means to be a father in the 21st century uh, with three fathers, Uncle Bo White, Israel Laya, and Nana Ared Damoa. Well, my name is Daniel Dazi, and your text messages I'm about to read are brought to you by Afro Daniel Backman slash your lifetime and Glyco Critical Illness Plan GSIP. Glyco, we cushion you for life. Uh, Aphrodite is offering you today the most comfortable chair in the world, the Nightingale Extreme Comfort Chair, with over 10 forcefully engineered features, especially customized for your health and comfort. Working has never had is this good. So go to Aphrodite on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade and feel this chair. You'll be amazed. Call us on 0302-663-085. Oh. Now get the Glyco Critical Illness Plan g for financial support when diagnosed with critical illness such as cancer, strokes, kidney failures and others. So speak to Glyco Life today for your g policy on 020-222113 or dial star Glyco on your star phone app available on Android and iOS. Glyco Life, we cushion you for life. My late father, Mr. Kofi Misa, was a real gem. He taught us how to serve God with all our heart and to be at peace with everyone who comes our way. He taught us to respect, be obedient, be humble, and uh, he will lift humble ourselves before God and he will lift us up. Clarissa Agrifin and Misa. Charlie Daniel, thanks for celebrating fathers today. We, the responsible fathers, are grateful. Kojo Bonsu Adaye Bwa, Kebe from Adenta. Kebe, how's your Benz doing? Um, hello, Daniel. The lessons I learned from my dad was to fear God, humility, work hard, don't complain. Happy Father's Day to him in advance from Ebenezer. Today, we want to deeply express our profound com- gratitude to our father, Dr. Nicholas Enieje Yebwa, retired headmaster of Ibuakwa State College and former agri science teacher of New Jobbing Senior High School, Koforidia, aka Nikio Niki. I hope I'm saying it well. His hallmark was discipline and perseverance without excuses. This has contributed to my success and the success of my siblings. The results are so clear. You produce a doctor in pharmacy at the USA, a soon-to-be PhD holder also in the USA, postgraduate, head of brands, um, yeah, head of brands at a telco. That's your daughter here in Ghana and an MBA finance graduate from UGBS. Dr. Nikki, you do all. Thanks for instilling in us discipline and the go-getter spirit. We love you and say happy Father's Day, Dr. Nikki Nikki from Dr. K, Aso, Eunice and Linda. Happy Father's Day. I, I, I wanted to end with this one. Hi, Daniel. Many years back when Israel was a fresh father, I learned so much from him. The days when he used to be the only man during antenatal or postnatal care at Ridge Hospital. I realized fatherhood is not all about sperm production, but also care for that sperm produced right till it arrives and years after that. I'm now a father of two. I've never missed hospital moments for both my kids. It is key for fathers to know what's going on in the lives of their kids. More big ups to my guests in the studio. I'll come to Israel with that question immediately. But um, no, before that, let me come to Nana rather. Nana, tell us about how you related with your wife and how that... Because you were saying earlier how, you know, if you're frustrated, you let your kids see. Um, how was that? How was that? Um, so I, I need to ask, um, clarify that question. <laughs> how I relate to, to her in the house... Um, so we are friends. Um, so perhaps it's 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 fortunate that we started going out when we were very young mm-hmm. in in the university, mm-hmm. and <laughs> even before we, we both started work. Uh, when your wife knows you at that level, you cannot bluff her yeah. <laughs> yeah. because on the, on the move it is, yeah. you know. So so very very yes. open. Um, uh, friends, we talk, we discuss. Um, if, if especially also in the decisions concerning the case, we we try to align, mm. you know. So we have we have one voice. So because the case, case are smart, they can actually if they know that you are not aligned, they can go here and come here and 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 bash your heads Please together, you. you know. So the, it's it's important that we we, we talk, we align, uh, we agree on the things that that need um, uh, to be done in in. Uh, in, in for, for the case so when they know that when they go to daddy what daddy has said is final when they go to mommy what mommy has said is final and the, the two of us are on the same place so basically that's how we mm. we mm. we we, mm. we, we mm. relate and, and, and you you were i just read the message about how you've had to go to antenatal how you have to scrub the 
um poly tank and what have you <laughs> were there any disagreements and stuff like that at the point oh no there there weren't at all i mean my i we, we both know the roles that we have to play at home i think my wife and i so my wife is taking care of some things in the house and i'm also taking care of some other responsibilities mm. in the house mm. all that for the kids to also know that we are supposed to we, we're all i i say that i'm my own house boy <laughs> and you the kids in the house you're also supposed to play your roles so they're doing laundry they're doing everything else so they don't you don't see them grumbling when you ask them to do something mm, okay. what you you what they tend to do is they may be a bit lazy and uh, in going about it but as kids play. usually yeah oh yeah but then yes they they would do it and okay. they, they respect uh, our, our wishes mm. so that relationship with, with my wife we we talk and uh, we have to discuss a lot of the time things about having to do with, with the kids a lot of the time we actually sitting together and having that kind of conversation okay there, there are times that the the kids know that uh, when they come to me to ask for something a lot of the time i'll say another time <laughs> <laughs> so they'll go to mommy <laughs> so, they'll, they'll, so they'll go to mommy sometimes mommy would will let them have their way but other times it's okay go and go and ask your dad i had a friend in in um, ss and he told me that his mother would bring a list and say let's do a list um social studies book she would write her own price and then after conspiring to dupe their father the two of them would oh, say no. <laughs> I'm, serious. I'm, I'm serious i'm serious no that's what happens when you're stingy at home they, they'll find a way of going around you know. so so um, there's there's a different price for the book for geo and a different price for the book for gra uh -huh. and then there's <laughs> a different price for the book for chi um, it's amazing <laughs> I, I, go, I, go. I, I, I want us to end on, on the note of what should it be I mean, what should it be for a man out there? And in, in in the next two minutes, I mean, how should it really be? What's the ideal role of a father? I think be be your best self, mm. live your best life because you are the you are the best you are the you are the instruction manual for them. Let your children see you live life well. Um, a lot of fathers are not doing the best they can, but they want their children to be that. It doesn't work. They know the children can see through hypocrisy. So you be the example. Be the best example um, you want to be. And there is a, there is a quote um, where um, someone said, um, "My father did did not tell me how to live. He lived, and made me watch him live." His example then becomes my understanding. And that is why I love this quote and the quote that I used like yesterday that life does not come with an instruction book. Nope. That's why we have fathers. Mm. <laughs> I wish it did. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I also want you to tell us something about an absentee father, but let me just announce that I'll be opening the phone lines in a moment, in just a minute, because Uncle was kind enough to use one minute when I gave him two. Um, 0302 216 <laughs> Zero three zero two two one six five four one zero three uh, zero two four four three four zero four three seven. Uncle, can you do it for me in one? A word for absentee fathers. You are missing a lot, and you will die early. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's for the fathers who totally abandoned their children. Yeah, because when you are involved in the life of your children, like these two are, they will live longer. Wow! Because that process of engaging your children takes away the stress. Mm. If they feel stress in the workplace and they get home and they are rumbling with the boys and things that are even, the stress will go. They don't need medicine to take the stress off. You will die. You will die. You will die sooner than your time. You will have to wait in the waiting room um, when you die, because you uh, you would have died way behind uh, ahead of your time. So you wait at a bus stop in eternity. <laughs> Interesting. And the man is showing he's a broadcaster. He's doing it in. Very, very little time. No, no. Okay, the phone lines are open now. 0244340437, Before my first caller comes in, Nana, what about those who are at home, but they are not really at home? You know, they are not very involved in the lives of their kids. What would you say to them? Same thing Uncle Lebo has said. You are missing. No. You, you, you are missing. You regret it. You know, in your old age, you would wish you had had that's that right. quality time with yeah. them because that's when you want them to get close to you. They are gone. They will ignore you. Yeah. 
Interesting, interesting. It's still live on the Super Morning Show. Okay, yeah, before, before you go, um, um, Dan, sorry. before you go, yeah, absentee he's, he's, fathers, he's, absentee fathers, the key thing is for the children to forgive them. Because mm. mm. quite often they themselves mm. were parented by an absentee father mm. or an irresponsible father. Mm. So forgive them. Otherwise, and this is this is the thing. Otherwise, especially for the boys, you become like them. Wow. Forgive wow. them. Wow. Okay. Uh, my first caller is Natalia. Natalia. Natalia, please turn off the radio. She's calling from Community Twenty. Good morning. Um, my name is Natalia, and I want to um, say a word in memory of my late father. Okay. My dad had been a very great father a great disciplinarian. He brought us up so well. And I wish that at this point in time, you're alive to listen to. Such a wonderful dad. I remember very well when um, he needed to, um, you know, discipline us in times when he had to trust in us. We would not understand him by virtue of, where the stage we were in our lives as young people but at this present moment that he is not alive we wish that he had been alive to really bear a living testimony to what he has managed to do Mm. i think that the best gift everyone can give to the children is a good training and Mm. if you are parents and you give good training to your children it will live with them forever right um i remember those times when we had to be um, I mean, taken to good schools, great schools like Holy Charles and Augustine's. And uh, my dad would do all he can to really, um, you know, take care. Unfortunately, we lost Natalia there, but Francis is on the line from Osu. Good morning, Francis. Hello, Francis. Are you there? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Great. Um, Let's hear you, bro. Okay. So, um, uh, good morning. Um, good morning. I'm I'm quite happy about what your um, your people you have, Uncle Bo White and your other uh, panelists. Uh, I'm quite happy about whatever they said. But um, one thing that um, I was hoping to hear is, um, you know, people are always talking about the good. Uh, however, they forget to talk about the bad. Okay, and um, I think that more lessons can be learned from the good um, than. Mm. I mean, from the bad and in the good. Mm. So mm. I was hoping for you to hear some of the bad situations that uh, they've been able to help their children to come out of and how um, we, can, we, the upcoming ones, can also learn how to be able to learn from um, such uh, decision making. I mean, well, like Francis, practice. like Uncle Ebo said, Uncle grew up with a father who was a drunkard, and he made that was the first thing he said that. Um, well, an alcoholic, I should say. And that was the first thing he said, that he learned not to drink uh, too much because of what he saw, um, because of what he saw his father do. But Pope is calling from Kumasi. Good morning, Pope. Um, hello, Pope. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes, boss. It, yeah, yes, Uncle White. Hello, uh, Uncle. <laughs> hello. Yeah, uncle is here. Speak to him. Okay. Hello. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, with this opportunity, let me say uh, happy Father's Day to all happy all fathers uh, in advance. Mm, thank you. Uh, all right. And I must say, some fa- mo- mo- uh, the men of today must be so much responsible that. They will not leave their world astray. And um, I am a victim of uh, some irresponsible, I, I, I was an irresponsible father, but it's, it's the only word that I can choose for now. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Because um, I, 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 I've looked for my father, I think, on two occasions, and he has turned me down. And I don't even know how to do. And for that reason, I've decided to be a good father to my kids. Okay. And I don't want to be like him. Mm. I'm trying as much as possible to train them to be so that I'll let them know that uh, some fathers are different from others. Mm. And all fathers must also know that 
taking good care of your child is a God-given responsibility. You cannot run away from it. And yeah, you don't even have to do that. You understand? Great stuff, Francis. Great stuff. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, Stephen is our last caller. He's calling from Ecropon. Good morning, Steve. <laughs> Did I lose Stephen? Oh, unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunately need. Okay, so we, we want to end this bit um, by saying a word for the fathers who are not here. But I have to say a big, big thank you to Israel Lai, Uncle Ebo White, Nana Redamwa. Thanks for spending your morning with us. And all the best to you. Happy Father's Day in advance, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, and all the best to you and, and the kids as well. And anyone there, anyone there who wants to say happy birthday, uh, happy Father's Day to me, God, just go and buy the ticket to my show and come. <laughs> <laughs> because the early bird, the early bird ticket ends on Sunday, so exercise the right, buy it now. Then I will know that you are wishing me well. Okay, so you uh, you heard, ladies and gentlemen listening. <laughs> All right, um, so any any more is here because we want to use the last, the final bit of of this show, of this part of the show, um, to say a word for the fathers who are not here. Yes. And uh, um, so I'm I'm gonna start. We have um two of our colleagues who have written um something for their fathers. Both of them um have lost their fathers. This one is from Raymond Aqua. And he writes about um, the lessons that his father left with him. And he says, being a man used to be simpler, guard the cave, provide sustenance, honor thy name. A handshake sealed the deal and the world was the promise. Today, things are a bit more complicated. We try to impress people we don't know by acquiring things we don't need. We have friend lists, but very few real friendships. Things like integrity and kindness are falling by the wayside. How can we know if we measure up, if the skills are constantly changing? I believe that a man's job is to be the best version of himself possible, to pursue truth and self-discovery, to give more and take less, to connect with your fellow men so that we may learn from each other, to challenge one another to live up to the highest ideals. I believe a man should be judged by the strength of his character, his willingness to make sacrifices to improve both himself and the lives of those around him to seek a deeper sense of purpose, to reach higher, and to find more in Christ. And that's from Raymond Aqua um, for his father. Now Malik Abbas Dabo also, um, who lost his father about 20 years ago, he says, if there are four of you on the farm, Weed as much and as fast as possible without looking back at how much the others are putting in and how committed they are. If the Kantosis praise you, it is because you have deprived them of the opportunity not to. Therefore, leave them with no other option than to praise you. And when they do, laugh and move on. After all, the praise is only because they couldn't condemn you. The less you receive from others, the more you more respect you get from them. Never ask for help unless you can't do without it. Nobody respects a beggar. I'm not a beggar and you're my son. I pray that you never become a victim of a setup. Otherwise, I know that you will never look twice at another man's property. You have enough energy and you can learn two things at the same time. I know you like school, but you must put Makaranta first. There are a few of the many lessons from a disciplinarian who died almost two decades ago. We, his children, found him too demanding to live with. He worked without tiring and it was hard to keep up with him. But now we understand why. And that's from Malik. And so we're taking a moment to remember all the fathers who are not here with us anymore and the impacts that they have left. And ultimately, because we are who we are because of you. Happy Father's Day. Back when I was a child.